Hey guys, what's going on? Nathan here. Welcome back to uh, probably what must be might be the final Kina de Totem update. And I have we got a lot of a more a lot of added stuff to show you guys today. I'm excited to show you. So um yeah, um it's summer holidays now. I finished my exam. But I'm so so happy. It doesn't even feel like summer yet, but who cares? And yeah, so overview wise, we worked on the map yesterday, or you might be seeing this video a couple of days later because I'm away, of course, but. We've worked on the alleyway and you know the section there with the room here and also some more redstone. So let's just go over it and I'll show you what we've actually physically Oh god. <laughs> oh, fucking hell that scared me. Okay, it shouldn't explode, I hope. No, yeah, I've just got difficulty on. But yeah, we first of all just bulked up this a bit. Have we done this? No, we haven't, yeah. Um so this is the room in here. Um there's not much decor to it yet, and there's no barriers because we were just kind of doing the perimeter. But you know, it's how it is, you know, that we've had to use steel iron bars instead of wood, and I'll show you why in a minute. And I thought the pillars here, and as you see the birch wood and the quartz pillars, really suits the uh, texture of it. And yeah, the floor's all the same. Again, it's just, we will go over it in fine detail, but we're just kind of finishing off the basis of the building. It's nearly finished. Um, let me just sort of do something. Um, put it down a bit. But yeah, I made this. You'll love this. With the texture pack, this is never wrapped on its own, but it looks actually like, it should be like a grill, kind of. And I've actually made, managed to make a fire trap. So basically, the scoring system's a bit off still, but you go to the button here. It's a radius use it it will all be on fire it's just that and it works like a normal you know if zombies are here they're gonna burn it isn't just like aesthetics so it places all the neverack you know it comes on fire and it's just um you know it's, it's really i'm really happy with it really so you know if you're getting chased by multiple zombies you know you kind of maneuver them here and you know they'll die and look at that the smoke as well that's awesome um and yeah it lasts for around 30 seconds because that's actually how, that's actually how long it lasts in the actual map and just to wait, as soon as 30 seconds are up, it goes away, back to normal. And I, I'm really happy with that, it's something, I just had an idea, I was like, you know, can fire actually be set as a block and it works? So basically the concept is, it's a newbie way to do it, you know, but I'm happy with it. Um, what, what's this? Um, it goes through here, what the hell is all this stuff? How the hell? I mean, that's just the texture, but yeah, it works anyway like this. All these commands here, basically, first, firstly, these set of commands set the blocks above the never rack to, you know, fire, so that's how the fire happens. This here is a timing mechani mechanism, just a simple redstone repeaters for 30 seconds. And then as you guess, these set them back to air. So very simple. And, you know, the uh, actual point system, you know, how it deducts, it's still in progress as such, just because, you know, I'm still f the finalizing the whole scoreboard thing, but it's just to remove five kills off. Um, now, just before we go on the, f the main bit of redstone, the waving sport, the wave spawning, um, let's show you the alleyway. So here we go. This is the barrier, as you can see, and there's some actual, like, just some, this is, like, behind the barrier, like, because we're starting to do that building as well, you know, because you have the buildings behind the barrier. Um, you have, you know, of course, there'll be, like, a park machine there, but, you know, you've got the stained glass, it's a lovely feature. Again, the walls are all one colour, and the floor's one colour, mainly because, as you see, this, we started to work on this, but we've only done that bit at the moment. And, you know, the bend here, the barrier there. Then you go up here, and, of course, you've got the fence and the backdrop there. The dustbins, and you've got the stairs. Okay, we haven't done much here, of course. We've done the basis, though. And then I believe the staircase are here. And then you go down here. Just like you would in the normal map. And then, of course, there's a barrier here. But then that will, um, let me just actually just break that. And yeah, but then you're here. And again, we haven't finished here. But we basically, it's very near finishing. Just, you know, just some decor there just to change the texture so it's all different materials. And we did that in around three hours. So I'm quite happy with that. And yeah, that's the basis of the actual map. So if you look up, you know, it's... It's very good to proportion, you know, when you think about it, and that's how it looks, so it's very good. Um, and I'm really happy because I finally nearly figured out the spawning, I'm sorry, it's this way, of how the waves are going to work, because there's a lot of easy ways. I could easily make a wave spawning thing if I wanted to, just by, like, time mechanisms, waiting when you kill a certain amount of zombies, you know, but I want to do it. So, you know, like, if you open door, zombies start spawning there and wherever you've opened. I want to make it like that, rather than just making zombies spawn randomly. So this is 1.8, I had some help from the forums, but basically, I don't know why the redstone's like that, it's really weird. Basically though, redstone clock, very simple, outputs here, you might, you might understand these commands. Basically, what you see on the right where it says P kills, that is my personal kill, so I hope this works. Let me just uh, get a diamond sword out, because I mean, that just kills on a 1, just do that. So if I spawn a zombie, this is in the map, I get a point, you know, that's how, that's where... You're going to use your P kill, so basically every time you kill a zombie to use points. I think that's better than using XP, because XP is not really reliable. So like that. So P kills is going to be used for opening doors, pack a punch, mystery box, etc. Um, so that's that. Um, and Z kills is just the general scoreboard objective. But then, 
on 1.8, there's a this feature hash. Well, this is called um, hashtag team, and it tracks the fake tracks. The, basically, this this command here is tracking a fake player, which adds up the kills in total. So if you're playing with more than one player, and I believe it's this command here. Basically, what's going to happen is, let's just say wave one, it wants to test to make sure there's at least ten, in wave one, ten zombies will spawn. But to make it, you know, that's not, normally on zombies, you don't have all zombies spawn at once. So it's going to spawn five zombies. This command will then put in place, you know, in consideration, of course. You know, scoreable players test, team Z kills, maybe five. So it will test for when at least five zombies have been, let's say five zombies spawn, number three actually. It will test to see if at least three zombie kills, three zombies have been killed, or three kills, then it will output the command. So let me kind of show what I mean, because I haven't really reset it, but you'll see what I mean. So I'm just going to change that to 100 for now. Look down here, it says score 54 is not in range of 55. So if I actually put a comparator, let me just see if I can uh, put this down. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, again, I'm not sure because I haven't actually tested this much, but I think it follows the main principle. So let's just put that, go into some redstone. I don't know why it's doing that, but yeah. So we're on 54 at the moment. I'm not with a friend at the moment on the server, so you know, it won't be able to stream both of them. But let's just say I'm going around killing two zombies. There we go, that's one, two, and it's a stay three, four. What's that? Oh, that's because of that operation, sorry. So that's four kills. So I press it, this is activating the command. Score 55. Okay, wait, did that work right? Um, kill it. Yeah, 56. So you see what I mean? So it resets it. So two two zombies now i've kill him it resets it press it down score 58 so basically every time you get a kill it's going to increase the score and then when it reaches a certain thing so let me just see maybe now if we put this down to let's put 60 and don't worry that text is always, that text is always not going to appear it's just i will remove that hide it it's just for now so if i kill one kill the other it should output it oh i'm only on 58 still oh it's because i have to activate it like that as you see, it activates it, and it does actually turn on this way because 60 is in the range of 60. So, it's a bit complicated if you don't know much about redstone, but trust me, it, I think it's the best alternate way to do it. Because this way, at least, it can track the total kills, so that's the best way to be an accurate reading of how many zombies you've killed, rather than separate. And you still have your P kills, so I can use my P kills to spend what I want. On top of that, I've still got to figure out a way to make it spawning in different rooms, but I think I have a concept for that. But guys, thank you so much for watching if you have watched this video. You know, the support to the videos have been really great. I'm really happy. It's kind of like a little hype for it as such. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you have some questions about if you understand this, be sure to ask and I'll happily answer them. But that's all I've got to say to you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next update video I do. Thank you and bye.